this video, we are going to talk about external apps or LTI tools for your Canvas learning management system. First, we're going to get started by sharing with you the Canvas guide for LTIs. Um, so when we talk about external apps, these are things, or LTIs, these are external products that you can connect to your Canvas learning management system. Um, a great example of an LTI for Canvas is Flipgrid. So we know that Flipgrid allows us to create video-based kind of discussion boards around different topics. Flipgrid has an LTI for your Canvas learning management system that allows you to connect your Flipgrid account as a teacher um, into your Canvas course. So before we get started too far, I do want to point out that LTIs can either be installed at the course level or on your account level um, for your school or district. Um, and certain LTIs are con are configured either at the course level or at the account level. And so if it's a LTI that you're wanting is going to be installed at the account level, you're going to have to contact your Canvas admin for your school or district and ask them to add the LTI um, for your school or district. So just to, uh, just to review, um, some of these things that we're going to talk about over the next few minutes in this video are things that you may not be able to do um, unless you are a Canvas admin for your school or district. So um, when would you use these external apps, right? So an external app is great because it keeps your students within Canvas. Um, and that's one of my main learning goals when I'm building out a course. I don't want them opening up other tabs and going to other websites and potentially getting lost or off track um, because they, you know, see an ad pop up and they're clicking somewhere else. I want to keep everything within Canvas in my course. And so external apps or LTIs allow me to bring in those content and um, digital learning tools that I know and love. Um, Nearpod has an LTI, um, Canva has an LTI. Uh, if you use Badger for badging, there's an LTI for that. So all of these great digital tools that we know and love can come in to our Canvas course via LTI versus our students having to go out to them and then potentially um, losing track of time or getting lost on which page to open up. Um, and so LTIs are great to set up. Um, and then once you set them up once, you can use them on multiple courses. So it's one of those things that you set up one time and then it's there for you. Um, so a couple of things to think about, um, uh, again, when those LTIs can either be installed at the course level, which is what I'm going to show you in a couple minutes, or at the account level by your admin. How do I know if an LTI is at the course level or the admin level? There is a wonderful website called the Edu App Center, and I'll put that, um, URL up here. The Edu App Center has listings of all different types of LTIs. So basically they kind of keep a collection. And what the great thing is, is that you can come in here and you can look at platforms. So we're gonna, for Canvas, obviously, it's Canvas LMS. And then we can look by our grade level. Um, so maybe I'm looking for some uh, elementary and then what kind of categories do I want? Um, I'm a big believer in things that are free. I won't ever tell you anything about um, anything that's not free. Um, I will say with the, with the caveat there that the, um, the Nearpod LTI is only if you have a Nearpod subscription. Uh, so that's, you know, one limitation of that. But you can go through here. Maybe I'm looking for math. Um, and I want to, you know, put in, uh, Equatio or, um, you know, if we want to come in and I think there's Pear Deck, um, Khan Academy, all of these different things. Um, Book Creator is a nice free one too, where students can create their own content and ebooks within a course. Um, OER Commons is a great LTI because that brings in a lot of open education resources. Um, and so does um, G uh, GeoGebra. Um, they have a graphing calculator that you can bring in. So all of these different things, um, if I click on one of these, let's look, let's look at CK12, which is uh, free textbooks. You'll notice that on the Edu App Center, they have um, in installation instructions. 
right? Um, so you have a lot of times um, it'll say consumer key and secret. And so that is simply um, a code that you have to install when you install the LTI. It's going to ask you for a consumer key and secret. And there are step-by-step -step instructions that are linked, right? And so you would have to just sign in with your CK12 account, which is free, and then they'll help you with generating that key and secret. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and look at our course here. And I'm going to going to have added a new module here for a new unit that I'm going to be doing on poetry. And so I'm going to come in and I'm going to um, add a content page. And let's create a page here. And so figurative language. And then I'm going to open up my figurative language page and edit. And then instead of adding content in here, I want to bring in some content. So where we find our LTIs, our apps that have been installed, is right here under the little um, plug icon on our rich content editor for Canvas. And so we have right here where it says YouTube, uh, but notice um, YouTube is the only um, LTI that's been installed for me. So I could go up here and I could go to YouTube and maybe I'm looking for a, uh, a video that's on uh, figurative language. And of course you can uh, preview the videos here. Maybe I like this one. And then we embed and the video now is right here um, within our content page, which is nice so that way students aren't clicking off and going into YouTube. Um, it also removes the ads that are on the sides of the page. Um, so that's a lot cleaner and nicer. So we can go save and publish. And I'll show you what this looks like in student view. I love, I love looking at my pages in student view to make sure um, they're there. Hey everyone, my name is Angie Campanello and this all right, and so we're looking at uh, figurative language. Um, and so that video looks nice, but I really want to add some more content. Maybe I would do when I go back um, and add OER Commons or some of those other things to my course. Um, so you can add LTIs at the course level by coming over to your left navigation for your course and going down into settings. And then you'll notice there's a little tab here called apps. Um, now your school or district can restrict which apps that you can install. So you may not see all the same ones that I have. Um, but let's go in and look for OER Commons. All right, so I'm just going to type that in. And I'm going to add the app. And it just says add app. Okay, and so now that's installed. So if I go back. Uh, to my module, and I go into figurative language, and I go back into my page, and now if I go under that, um, I see my OER Commons. All right, and so here's where it says invalid uh, consumer key, so that means I missed a step, and that happens, so I did this on purpose. Uh, so I'm going to cancel the, uh, yeah, and go back to my settings and installed. All right. And so if you're interested, um, you need to um, register for OER Commons account and request, uh, here's your steps right here. So I haven't followed all those steps. So it's going to give me that error message. So I need to first register for an account, find your group, build your library, and request activation. All right, so we're going to go back uh, to the App Center there, and I'm going to go look for um, Flipgrid. Flipgrid is uh, one of the apps that you would install as a teacher um, because you have to connect it to your individual teacher's account. So Flipgrid is one of the LTIs that your admin will not be able to install for you because it has to be integrated with your teacher's account. All right, so um, 
I'm going to go ahead and click on add app. And then it's going to ask me for that consumer key and secret, right? Um, and so if I go in here with the instructions, um, visit admin, right? So I'm going to go into my Google account. Okay. Okay. So when your Flipgrid account loads, you have your kind of um, your homepage with your discussions. You're going to go in the top right corner and you're going to go um, to your profile. And there's a tab called integrations that you've probably never paid much attention to before. And we're going to create a new Canvas integration. And so we're going to just call this um, your school name. All right. And then notice it automatically comes up with this consumer key and secret. So we're going to copy that consumer key and back on our page here where we're adding. We're going to paste that in and then our shared secret. Um, and so basically these are just codes that allow my Flipgrid account to talk to um, my Canvas LMS. Okay, so now Flipgrid's installed. So maybe after, um, if I go back to my module page, I'm going to go back to my content area there on figurative language. Um, we're going to go in and edit this again. So maybe after we watch the video, after watching the video, um, post a flip grid box. And we're going to come back over here to my plug, and I should be able to see view all. And our flip grid has to be, so some of the LTIs, um, you can add to a content page, and then some of them have to be um, an external tool. So I'm going to uh, say click on the next button to see flip grid. Okay. So I'm going to save this page here and I'm going to go to my module and I'm going to click on the add for to add to my module. And instead of that, I'm going to come down here to external tool. And here's where I have Flipgrid, right? Because Flipgrid um, is the tool I just added. So we're going to um, call that. All right. And so if I publish, All right, and so now I see my Flipgrid account. All right, and so it's automatically created me a discussion for this, and I can go in here and create a topic for my students to respond to. So, um, what do you think? Figurative language. Do you think, I'll just call it a what do you think? And then give me two examples of figurative language. And I want this to be 30 seconds. Create topic. All set. Okay. So now if we come in to my home page and I'm going to go back into my student view. We're going to check on this and then they see the what do you think give me two examples of figurative language right so they can go ahead and record that response right here within the Canvas course. So I love being able to integrate tools. And it is a little bit tricky at first if you've never done an LTI um, and understanding, you know, where do I get the consumer key and the secret. I will just tell you to keep practicing and go back um, to that Edu App Center um, with the detailed instructions. Um, because they really do have some great tools out there. Um, so you might even have, um, for your curriculum, you may have, because um, a lot of curriculums have an LMS integration, so you might be able to bring in your LTI.
Um, Canva is another great integration that's free. Um, so that way your students can um, create images and things and send them to you uh, right into Canvas. Also, any images and graphics that you create, you can easily pull them into a Canvas course if you have the Canva um, LTI. So I'm going to leave student view and just one more time, we're going to go over um, kind of some instructions here. So I went into my modules and so some LTIs, you can add content to a page. Some LTIs have to be an external tool which means I go into my plus button and I select that external tool and I'll see the list of external tools that are available. Or if I go into a new page and create the page, I'll see the LTIs that work there. So if you go into a content page and you click on that plug icon and you're not seeing your LTI, then that means that that LTI has to be an external tool. All right. Um, and then Make sure to also go under your settings and apps, and you can see all the apps that are available. Um, you can see the ones that you have installed or the ones that you have installed. So here's the three that I have now, uh, Flipgrid, OER Commons, and YouTube. You can also search uh, by name. And keep in mind that your school or district admin might have um, removed some of these choices so you might have a more curated list that you can choose from uh, but there are quite a few different ones that you can um, create and again remember the instructions the instructions are on each one of these apps right about um, so for book creator you have to of course have a free account and then you have to um, choose LMS integration and click the generate button, right? And so uh, Book Creator is another uh, simple one, kind of like Flipgrid, where you just log into your account and click on that LMS integration and generate the key and secret. And then your, um, your Book Creator account will be linked automatically to your Canvas course. So I hope you take a few minutes to explore Remember, the guides are there. You can always get to your Canvas guides by clicking on the Help button in your navigation and uh, finding the Canvas guides there. Uh, but also feel free to reach out to your Canvas admin um, and ask them what LTIs they have installed. So a couple of ones that you're going to want to make sure that they've installed at the district level. These are not LTIs that you can install um, at the classroom level um, are Go Open and See, which is North Carolina's Open Education Resources LTI that allows you to bring in lesson plans and resources from Go Open right into your Canvas course. Um, that has to be installed by your admin, so I would make sure you ask them uh, to install that LTI for you. So I hope this has been helpful and look forward to seeing you on a future video.